All right. So, uh, did you guys get a chance to read the chapter? Yes. I have, yeah. Yeah, it was a very short... Oh, it looks like my connection is terrible. Let me try to disconnect and reconnect. All right, I should sound better now. <laughs> All right, um, so the... Oh my gosh, my connection is bum. I wonder why... Uh, so, the chapter is a really very oh, it... simple introduction to Buddhism. Um, what did you, what was your, just a brief, like, reaction to the chapter? I only heard half of that, but I think I got the gist. You're saying, what did I think of it and what's my reaction? Is that what you meant to say? Correct. Okay, so we'll have to infer. Um, I thought it was quite succinct, so that was one of the nicer things about it. Um, and something that really stuck out for me. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two things. One is the way it defined the uh, Four Noble Truths. Mm -hmm. And the other is how it talked about Buddhism being a form of self-reliance. And... The reason this kind of stood out was I've noticed in every introduction to Buddhism and no fault of it mm -hmm. it's impossible not to get some bias towards a school <laughs> <laughs> um, and so if you like if we take the self-reliance for example uh, it's interesting because that's really different from say Pure Land Buddhism it's almost a polar opposite to my understanding of Pure Land Buddhism where you're just devoting yourself completely and giving giving up your power in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe the lesson to be learned from this, because we, we, you know, at least you and me, I don't know much about Bern. Um, we've heard the first Four Noble Truths and some basic teachings in, in countless ways by this point. Right. Um, and... we probably evaluate them based upon what the first few we heard were and took those to be true and then try and fit them in with it. And it makes me think if someone had come from a Pure Land school and read this, they probably thought, well, no, this isn't, this isn't what I call <laughs> what isn't at all. And the only reason I look at this and go, yeah, it seems about right to me is because that's how I sort of started. Ah. What do you think? Um... Bun, what's your uh, take? Oh, okay. Um, I just thought it was interesting. I guess it's because I consider myself to be more of a beginner type person. So I didn't realize that there may have been some sort of bias in this introduction, even though I guess I have come across these ideas previously. But I guess one thing that I did notice was that the, the fourth noble truth mentioned like the eightfold path was like could lead you from nirvana and since my first exposure to buddhism was in a tibetan buddhist um center mm -hmm. where they told us that the eightfold path was more of a zen thing which i'm not sure if that's true but i don't know it was just something i noticed that i haven't been exposed to as much is that like idea mm-hmm yeah. Hmm. I can respond a little to that if you'd like. Sure. So, we all like to think that we, and this is, this is specifically talking about me at this point, um, that we know what the, in quotes, true teachings are, um, and so on. Um, what I can say is the introduction I had into Buddhism was mainly drawn from Pali Canon, and I've sat and read what is apparently the Pali Canon. I have to believe the website that says it's sourcing it. I, I can't go and pick the tablet up myself. <laughs> um, but the Theravada traditions and the Pali Canon, which seems to be as reliable a source we're going to get, do include the, the Eightfold Path. And mm -hmm. so it's a Theravada thing, it's a Mahayana thing, it's a Zen thing as well. It's It's... The schools I know that kind of 
say otherwise. Or maybe they, they don't say otherwise, they just have less of a focus on it, because it's quite central, especially in Theravada. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the Pure Land School, the Nichiren schools, and mm-hmm. they just really love Nichiren's letters and the mm-hmm. Lotus Sutra. And the there is another school. Oh, yes, yeah, some of the slightly more recent and developed and experimental maybe i'd call them um tantric traditions where there's deliberate violating of precepts for example Hmm. they're they're very different when you compare it to a a, quite a traditional theravada look at the pali canon and interpret that Mm -hmm. Ah, but the, the looking at this now these four noble truths are in my experience, pretty close. The wording and the the sort of subtle nature of them is different, but the the general idea is pretty close to most of the formulations I've seen of them. So the first one I might hear as um, life is dukkha or life Mm -hmm. contains dukkha or life is is impermanent, life is unsatisfactory. They're all just trying to translate the word dukkha and struggling is really what's going on. Right. The second one I've heard formulated slightly differently, but the same sort of idea. It talks about suffering comes from the three poisons or the five poisons or however many they've (laughs) got in their tradition. Mm -hmm. Like uh, ignorance, um, some of them say delusions, anger, hatred, greed, those kind of things. Uh, The third one, I think every... Every single tradition agrees to come without any differentiation <laughs> for once mm-hmm. <laughs> that I've heard anyway. It's possible to get out of this, you know, why are we here? Um, and they all agree that there is an eightfold path and some of them seem to change the meaning of the words ever so slightly. So I wouldn't say this is misleading. I didn't want to give that impression. Uh, right. I want to say that everything we read hmm. has a bias. So it's not the fault of this for having a bias. It's just to note how I naturally want to sort of agree with this because of my roots are in the same sort of roots as this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's my following. bias, and I'm seeing it in the writing, and it's good to notice. Is that is 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 that helpful for you, Ben? Yeah, it is. Thank you. Problem. <laughs> um. Yes. I don't think I have as nuanced feelings about the chapter. <laughs> um, I came to Buddhism at, <laughs> from such a sideways angle that mm-hmm. um, I, I don't know. I, uh, I am fortunately free of certain like um, ingrained biases, I guess. Um, because really, I came from it from my interest in psychology, um, it, which is funny how it led me to Buddhism, but it did. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> um, I always appreciate books like this that take the time to lay the groundwork of like where the whole. M- mythos of the practice came from um as far as who defining who was buddha cuz cuz the the layman really only knows him as buddha right like how many non practitioners can you find and go what was buddha's real name <laughs> do you know what i mean mhm mhm And so I like that it does a little bit of that. And this is my less... You had a very in-depth and well-said response to this chapter. And I'm like, it was okay. It was a good book. I read it and... (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) Um, It's not a competition. It's not a competition. I just... uh... I hadn't really thought about the flavor of the branch. The chapter felt like it was leaning towards. Um, I suppose I just 
read it as another surface history of Buddhism. And so I'm intrigued and feel like I really need to reread the chapter now based on your description of how you felt about it and what Bun said. So. I'm hmm. getting most of what you're saying. Uh, you're cutting out, but I think I understand. I'm sorry. Um, it's my end as well. I'm watching Discord go off and on. Yes, I think it is a Discord server uh, problem. We seem to be maintaining a conversation, so this is good. Uh, yes! Uh, so... It might be worth... So, can I challenge something you've said there? Okay, yeah, go for it. So, the in between the cutting out, what I managed to ascertain... Uh, um, was you said you reckon you came into Buddhism without bias? Is that what you said, or did I miss? Well, you? without the same bias. Um, okay. Like a different kind of bias, certainly. But there was no one thing I thought to be true about Buddhism. So much as I, I thought things to be true that I brought in from psychology. And when Buddhism different parts of the the what was being said that I read on fit with that then I kind of stuck with those things rather than a branch of Buddhism does that make sense I heard um I heard you say that you have a bias something f <laughs> fits with something and does that make sense okay hold on uh I was leaning in a nice Nice leaned back position. Now I'm going it's to not, It's not. It's not. So when I entered. Your microphone is the problem. Yeah. It's the, the Discord server. What we could do, if it, if we want, if we, we can um, have an alternative voice. This channel, if you want it as well. But. Uh yeah, what I'm gonna do is just type into the Sangha Book Club the the meat of my idea. Mhm. Mm uh okay. Okay, um, so I would be interested if you're okay with talking about it, Bun. Um, what, what your introduction into Buddhism was and how this maybe conflicts with or supports your current idea of it. Take that as a no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was like trying to figure out how to unmute. <laughs> um, because I turned off the stream. Um, could you repeat your question, actually? That's okay. The stream's not running. Um, so the. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm not running the stream, am I? The question was yeah. from your reading of this, or from, from the background that you've got. I know you said you're newer to it, but you have, you know, you, you you've got some notion of Buddhism. It'd be interesting to hear how this sort of agrees or conflicts with your own background. Because one thing I found and the motivation for this question is I often assume a lot of things are universal in Buddhism. And then that assumption is violated very quickly when I really ask people. And so I really want to know what your background is thus far. Hmm. Well, I guess how I mentioned my introduction to Buddhism was just attending a few like services or slash classes at a Tibetan Buddhist center, which um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not very eloquent when it comes to talking. So hmm, how do I say this? I guess the biggest thing that I mentioned earlier that I kind of just latched on to was that they mentioned the Eightfold Path, and that was just something that was really glossed over during Dharma discussions at that center, where we never went, like, they, it was mentioned in passing that, oh, this is something that's done in other traditions, but really, we rely on things like the, the two pillars, um, if that's the correct term, like wisdom and compassion, in order to, like, follow the Dharma and stuff. So 
that was something, I guess. And, um, hmm. Other than that, I mean, it seemed pretty, I didn't, I guess I didn't latch on to much other bias that I could feel, but maybe I just don't know what I don't know either. Yeah, I, I think I got most of that. Yeah. Did you, um, so you mentioned the two pillars. Yeah. And I've not heard of those. Oh. So could you, or you, maybe you did, maybe it cut out. Could you, from your, and I know you've only been on the short course, and we take it with, with that in mind. Could you, could you share with us what those are from your understanding from that little, little short course? Okay, um, let's see. So the two are wisdom and compassion. And from my understanding, wisdom is basically emptiness. That's kind of, I guess, obtained through meditation. I might be getting this completely wrong, though. <laughs> Just letting you know. It's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah. And compassion, I, it was hard for me to mm, peg down what that really meant within the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. I just know that sometimes they would compare like Tibetan Buddhism to specifically Zen for some reason during our Dharma discussions. Hmm. Whereas from my understanding, from what they talked about, Zen was more of a, you can obtain enlightenment just solely through yourself through meditation, whereas in Tibetan, it was more like you would, mm, you would, I don't know if like you would have to do physical actions for other people, but I do know that there were certain meditations where you would kind of take in the suffering from the world and internalize it and expel like, or I don't know if expel is the right word, but I guess it, it would just like help relieve some of the suffering in the world. And I'm not sure if that type of meditation exists in other traditions. I just know it was kind of more higher level advanced and something not a beginner like me was very much exposed to unless like one of the older people talked about it with each other <laughs> and I yeah overall this was probably not a very good explanation of what those you know of um, compassion and wisdom but yeah that's just my understanding that that was something that we followed instead of the eightfold path I found it quite helpful so thank you it's, oh, sorry, my Dremel's still running. I'm sorry, I'm sanding something while we're talking just to keep my hands busy. Uh <laughs> Before we continue, can I, huh? I make one suggestion um, to see if we can get a better connection. Do we want to pop onto Zoom? Ew. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I don't have a Zoom account. Does that affect anything? You don't need one. You don't need one. This is an open meeting. Anyone can join it. So just so we can really hear each other, because it would be a shame for you to say, you know, spend the time telling me mm. things and not to hear it. My. I am not 100% against it. I just don't love Zoom. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> if it works. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Hold on. I got this. All right. 
Here you go. You can see my beautiful face as well. Right. I already posted one. Okay, oh, let me... you did it. I did it too. Oh no. Okay. I'll go to yours. Don't go to mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it's Zoomception. Let me. You can go to Zoom inside of Zoom. No. Uh, I don't know. Let me find my thing. Let's delete my thing. My thing is gone. I'm in the thing. That thing's coming up. Um, now I hear echoes because I need to fix audio. So, Bun, by the way, if you think you have trouble with Discord, you're about to have a lot of fun. Just so you Oh my god. <laughs> just, just so Great. you're aware. Okay. All the things should be there. I can hear you through Discord and Zoom now, so that's good. I um, was waiting for Bun before I unmute on Zoom. Yes. See my lovely face as well. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, remember. Can I start video field to, oh. Because I have to download stuff. I think you can run it in the browser, Oh, yeah, can't I'm you? just admitting you. I just got someone trying to join, so. Bun. I'm going to hop out of this classroom now. OK, yeah. Okay. So what we do now is we're going to exit Discord. Ooh. OK. OK, this is a microphone test. So both. Yep. Uh, you don't. I I can't make the video work while I'm running the software that actually records the video, the audio for these. Does that make you feel better? <laughs> yeah. Now we're on equal, equal ground. Let's see if this is any better. So. <laughs> we did it. Where were we? Oh gosh. Um, pillars. The bun was telling us about the two pillars. And I was thinking about it, and I think that what is what you're saying is I don't actually think, from my experience, I know that it's not at least in the more in the branch of Buddhism I'm more familiar with. I don't think taking on the world's problems into yourself is a concept. But then again, maybe I just don't know enough about the branch sounds. I'm familiar with. <laughs> it's it sounds very much to me like uh, one of the tantric branches, which funnily enough are really popular. Hmm. You're in Tibet, so because that's the kind of thing they like to do, as far as my understanding goes, anyway. So we go. We we learn. Something new. It, like the the the, pra the meditation practice was the thing that really sounds like tantric Buddhism. Like uh, the pillars I hadn't heard of. But, but. Definitely meditation on a whole, I, but I don't. No. Yeah. I'm sorry. What? Oh, I just think that like I tried googling pillars, so I might be using the wrong term. I don't think there's like a set. I don't know. Or maybe there is, but I. It was like they said, or maybe it was the two wings. <laughs> It was just like the two things that we were, you know, in that school that they, I guess, used and emphasized. And I think that at that particular center, the more advanced, I, I don't know if the word is practitioners, but the people there would do more of those, I guess, tantric practices. Although like my knowledge of that is very little because I only went to the beginner classes. Mm. But it is interesting because, you know, back in high school where they introduced world religions, they did mention the Eightfold Path. And then when I went to the center that didn't really emphasize the Eightfold Path, I was a little surprised hmm. <laughs> just because it wasn't my first first impression of what Buddhism was, I guess. Mm-hmm. It's 
Very good to hear. Uh, we'll interview you about Buddhism every time someone might who comes and speaks about it. I just looked it up, and it, it is coming from the tantric traditions. These okay. Pillars. So, um, I wonder if the sort of we don't do Zen stuff thing comes from the issues they have with China, because you know Zen and, and uh, has roots in Chan from China. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's a bit of a hmm. historical reason why they separated out. So we know that Tibet and China have been had a few tiffs. That could be. Let's say. Yeah, a reason. I'm not quite sure, but. Hmm. I realize. I just, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go on. I just. And I don't want to paint this center as being, having malice, I guess. It's just that it seemed that they thought Zen Buddhism was just more, and I don't want to use this word, but just more selfish in general. And they would use the words like plain. So I guess there was some language that was mm, a little bit harsh. Mm -hmm. I guess towards Zen or like or especially towards what they referred to as new age Buddhism because that was um, something they didn't like where people just cherry or sorry cherry picked bits and things from various traditions and instead of I guess just following one path hmm. which was yeah I don't know I don't know if it was that just particular center or if it is a reflection of, you know, a larger culture within Tibetan Buddhism. Mm -hmm. It may also be that um, it may, may be that, so, so some people, even within Zen, are getting upset about Zen um, <laughs> because <laughs> there is what they call Americanized Zen, who, which in fairness is, is being a mal amalgamated into a very individualistic culture. And so it's quite natural that the very I can do this tendencies from, or teachings from Zen are getting the focal point in mm -hmm. what I would call American Zen. Um, so it might be that they're, they're looking at that, and I, I understand that. Um, and also the roots, as far as I know, I realize I'm talking a lot here. So no, it's fine. Tell me Please to, go. Nope. Um, Talk more. <laughs> the, the roots of the tantric schools come from... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can do that. Um, <laughs> also the, the tantric schools uh, come from uh, the Mahayana. In fact, some people even regard them as part of Mahayana still. And Mahayana was a response to the Theravadan. Well, not just a response, but a mm -hmm. response to what we call Theravadan, uh, in the sense that they saw the Theravada Buddhist, uh, Buddhist as understanding a lesser teaching, and they called them Hinayana, mm. which translates as lesser vehicle, and Mahayana is greater vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so they're very rude. Is, is making these kind of distinctions, and so it's, it's not too surprising. Um, and one thing I've come to learn from really trying to overcome my biases and look at the schools that seem weird to me, um, is actually they all have a point. <laughs> so one of the things I love, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a Pure Land practitioner, but one of the things I really like about Pure Land is their devotional practice from the understanding that I managed to gain of it is a skillful means. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the term skillful me means burn before I go on. Um, I, I've heard it before, but could you refresh me, please? Sure. So there's, it's related to a conversation that actually happened on the server recently. Um, you, you sometimes see, especially in, in people who have looked at Zen on a surface level, they will just say some kind of absolute truth as a phrase, as a quote. And if someone says there is no teacher, you you're looking for a teacher. It's not very helpful. Okay, we would say it's not very skillful. So the teaching might be completely like true, as true as words can be anyway. Um, but it's 
it's not the appropriate, it's not the skillful way to convey something. It's not a practical means to try and gain some understanding because preaching the absolute truth to someone, it's like, it's like Stephen Hawking explaining the depths of, of black hole mechanics to me. So I'm going to just not have a clue what he's talking about. Um, I need context. And so the reason I brought up skillful means is when I look at Pure Land, I see it as a very skillful means for dissolving ego. Um, and one of the objections that, say, Pure Land might have about these very self-centered, these I am going to do this ones is they're very ego filling. They're very individualistic. And, and sometimes the problem is, in fact, often the problem is this sense of ego. And so they're, they're practices, you must devote yourself to Amitabha Buddha or some other um, Buddhas because you need to let go of this you-ness. And so this utter devotional, just let go of yourself. Stop trying to think, well, why do I do this? Just let go, let go. And this is what some schools are doing when they complain about, and this is what they're talking about when they complain about these self-centered mm -hmm. practices. Mm -hmm. So there is a point to each of these schools. They all have a good point to talk about. I realise we've also gone off the book a lot now, but it seems to be a nice discussion. <laughs> I think being aware of this sort of stuff, it, it is kind of important as you enter into something as actually cr incredibly broad <laughs> as Buddhism can be. Yeah. And we're also reading teachings out of context. A lot of the time translations of translations of translations of translations mm -hmm. that have been passed on between people person after person mm -hmm. new words have been added subtleties have been changed and we don't actually have a clue That's what the Buddha said. Real. <laughs> <laughs> i guess there is some merit in the self-centered path then in the sense of you know if we had the pure mm -hmm. words of the buddha it might be it might be you know, say, well, just take that then. <laughs> but we don't. So we've got to do something ourselves. Because <laughs> even the, the devotional practice saying devote yourself, we don't really know if that is the word of Buddha. It always amuses me that no matter what um, religion or practice you are studying, there's always going to be an an inevitable discussion or debate over the context in which the teachings were said. Mm -hmm. mm. According to um, who was it? I think it was, have you heard of Doug Starmer? I have not. So oh, Doug wait, Doug's Dharma? Is... Sorry, <laughs> I was thinking of a book, but yeah, I've seen his channel. <laughs> yeah, so my understanding of him is, is he's very scholarly and as reliable as the sources we're going to get on scholarly matters, because he seems to spend a lot of time doing sort of comparisons between multiple translations of things and trying to work out what whether there was some commonality between them. And he, he's... He's as reliable as sources I'm aware of anyway, um, and Bhikkhu Bodhi for that matter. Uh, and he was talking about how the Theravada tradition would be, was, came from this idea of wanting to preserve the Buddha's teaching. And they were so careful about it, if they weren't sure if something was the Buddha's or not, they would just include it anyway. And so the Pali canon mm -hmm. grew and grew and grew and grew. Right. Mm -hmm. And so even the things in the Pali Canon, which we think of as oh, they're definitely the Buddha's words, we're not even sure about that. Hmm. Hmm. Makes it hard to navigate, doesn't it? It makes it very hard to navigate. <laughs> It's already hard enough trying to parse through 
translated texts mm -hmm. yeah. and trying to figure out, okay, what does this even mean, even though it's in English now? Um, would you like to know about, I mean, unless someone wants to talk about the, some specific contents of the book, we could just go off on a tangent and try and fill each other in on what our understanding of Buddhism is. Um, I'm comfortable with you going on a tangent, yes. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> We've heard buns. Uh, do you want? Want to go, Deswes? I realize I'm taking control of this quite a bit, but um, no. Nope. Tell me if you want me to. Nope. Sometimes weeks are like this, and my only job here is to facilitate and make sure nobody goes off into crazy town. <laughs> um, which well, I've never had. Sure that was it. It seems no better. <laughs> oh no. Um. You've never had anybody go on crazy town time. Um, I don't think that my understanding of Buddhism would be helpful. Can I ask why? Um, I am a simple soul. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, uh, I come to Buddhism not with a lot of theological ideas, but like, Pretty much, if it's one of the Four Noble Truths or the Eightfold Path, I'm, I dig it. And the rest of it is just inconsequential to me. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's fair enough. But that is your Buddhism. That is your Buddhism. That's, that's, that is like a good thing to share. <laughs> that's my Buddhism. <laughs> um, now, I love discussion. There's a, there's a lot of depth to it. <laughs> I'm sure you know. Um, I love discussion. I love getting into deeper ideas and all of that and uh, exploring the ways that people like go through their path. But to me, so much of it is so inconsequential to the ultimate truth if that makes any sense so i'm gonna ask you a very difficult question now okay um, what is it what is the ultimate truth is that what you're mm -hmm. asking don't say 42 don't <laughs> say 42 um no nothing so complicated um, that it doesn't matter. <laughs> so would you say your, or your Buddhism is a form of nihilism? Mm, no. <laughs> um, all that we are is in itself an expression of the universe. What? We, Sorry, I missed the first word. What's in itself an expression? Everything. We are. It's an expression of the universe. Mm -hmm. It's different facets of the ultimate reality interacting with itself. Mm -hmm. And so we become kind. So in that same way that the universe should be kind to itself, and we should be kind to ourselves. I'd agree with that. That's what Zen hmm? is spending a lot of time talking about, mm. especially pure plum, plum village Zen. Um, <laughs> plum, so plum village Zen is the Zen I'm most familiar with. Just ah. to be clear on this and make my own biases known, I'm part I'm part of a plum village sangha as well, ah. um, and a, and an Ichiren sangha and this sangha. Um, And maybe one of the sort of uh, technical difficulties have actually stopped me being a part of it so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
don't know. We, we classify ourselves into schools sometimes. Like people say, I'm a secular Buddhist and I'm a Gyoban Buddhist and I'm a Zen Buddhist and so on. And in one of these meetings, what became clear is we're all secular Buddhists. <laughs> all of us. All of us. Because once all, all the schools seem to agree on this one point, that is, see for yourself. There's so much you can teach with words, but you actually need to see things for yourself. Right, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And secular Buddhism seems to be really a reaction, an internal, so, so people, this is it's also where I came from, so I can speak for myself. Up here, but, mm -hmm. um, secular Buddhists looking at Theravada texts who eventually learn about the rest of Buddhism's facets continues to but uh, the the idea with me was, was I looked at uh, my very surface level understanding of Buddhism and went ah you know we've got hungry ghosts and spirits going around and, and there's different worlds and realities and I'm there going eh it's just this just seems all all like pseudoscience to me. It seems like people just wishfully thinking and do you know uh, I would have called myself an agnostic but I'll speak mm -hmm very much like an atheist at the time um and spending the time to actually sit and listen to each of these schools has shown me that they're all actually very secular they are buddhism is is, is the science of the mind more than anything else mm -hmm. the science of human experience and As you pointed out, basically the science of reality at a very fundamental level in terms of what we can perceive and observe. Um, I don't know what the fundamental stuff of reality is, but my human mind can best establish it as just being this fabric that has fluxes that emerge that happen to be us sometimes. Um, and we're all <laughs> looking at it. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's matter becoming self-aware. Yes. I and agree. Then getting really upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's it's really interesting to to take things like the, what I would call the more extreme practices or the ones that make the grander claims and listen to those because when you actually investigate what they're claiming, for example, um there is in some schools there's a rejection of the materialist mind that it's not just your brain um and there's nothing when i really looked at it like before i was thinking well you know it's quite a claim to make but there's there's it's, there's nothing really that we know that, that that says that can't be a thing because We, 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 in psychology, at least my understanding of it is, we look at the, the, the behaviours of the mind, the aggregates of the mind, the statistical facts of the mind that change amongst cultures and so on, but we can measure them in the moment. And they, we, we, we are always looking at like, the things around the phenomena we're interested in, but we never actually look at the mind because we can't. And I guess Buddhism is saying, yeah, you can, you can look at your own. Yeah. And when we get to this point of this ultimate fabric of reality, whatever that is, mm -hmm. I have no clue. Physicists can work that out, not the guys who work with us. Um, <laughs> there's no reason why mind, in fact, it seems like the simpler, the, the Occam's razor of it is, is, is to say that mind is part of the fabric of reality because it, it's... <laughs> To, to suppose that, that matter and mind are separate is a concept. And it's a concept of the mind. It's a concept that is only exists in the mind. The whole concept of matter being a distinct thing from anything else is a concept in the mind. And I'm sure at a fundamental level, reality just doesn't give a crap about my concept. Right. Mine's there, whether, no matter how I 
I decide to, to construct it, whether I call it matter or not. Matter mm -hmm. is just a label for a subset of reality. So coming from secular Buddhism, it's actually taught me to be better at being sec secular because I realized I wasn't secular. I was coming in with a materialist view and that got blown to bits by Buddhism. Materialism is an assumption. And with that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone agree, disagree, have a comment? I mean, this is the part where Buddhism always, or maybe always is a strong word, but like, <laughs> it's so hard for my own mind to wrap around <laughs> when we start going into things like this. <laughs> For some reason, and maybe it's because my previous religious background was pretty stringent, I guess, and had a lot mm -hmm. of I guess, mystical concepts in it. Mm -hmm. So when I was exposed to Tibetan Buddhism, which I think is more so like leans towards those mystical concepts as compared to something like Zen. Um, I was really drawn to that actually. Yeah. <laughs> so that was just like a different experience I had as someone who wasn't coming from an ag agnostic or atheist secular background. Mm hmm. But yeah, it's, I guess, just my, the way that I interacted with religion is something I'm still trying to, I guess, unpackage. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. I don't think Buddhism is supposed to be yes, this very stringent thing that there's only one single path that you have to walk correctly and, right. you know, very, you know, in a straight line. But I think I was looking for that. <laughs> in this, which, what are the rules? Tell me the rules. Which was hard. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's good to acknowledge that that's what you were looking for, but I can tell you this much. I was, I was looking for a single path and I found many. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and a lot of my learning in Buddhism, especially this year, uh, my practice has gone from what I would say is weak for me um to a lot more effort going in this mm -hmm. year and one of the things that that really really taught me a lot i mentioned this to you before mm -hmm. um mouse i'm gonna call it now. <laughs> too long otherwise so. most people call me dis but it you is. can call me mouse if you want i mean the mouse is cute so <laughs> um is every time I look at a, a school of Buddhism and I really like, get past my inhibition because uh, just for fun's sake to give you some context that I've told Mouse about this before is I came in looking at certain practices um, judgmentally and not realizing my bias of, of coming from a certain mm -hmm. background. If I'd have started with them, I would have had the bias the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, and so I thought, no, I'm going to try this because I had heard certain schools were regarded as cults and so on, but that was the only sangha local to me. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to try them out. I'm going to test this belief of mine that they were cult. Mm -hmm. And it got blown to bits. They're not. They're lovely. They're absolutely lovely. They're not trying to pressure me to doing anything I don't want to do. They're talking about the same Buddhism through totally different means. And that was weird because I thought, oh, shit, I thought, excuse my language, but I thought, I thought I knew Buddhism reasonably well before that moment. I ain't got a clue. Only one tiny sliver of it. And this is why I actually have the picture I do on Discord, that icon, is, is to remind me of it. It's to remind me. I, uh, I only have a little sliver of understanding in the giant world that is Buddhism. So... The... I guess the... The moral of this for me, and hopefully maybe you can learn something from my own mistakes, is 
I mean, it sounds like Burns got this sorted, to be fair. It was really my issue. But <laughs> going into this, trying to be secular, saying I don't need to know other things, like this is enough, um, was really inhibiting my practice. And I've been far happier and suffered far. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify and just say I suffered less. It's, 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 just, it's not quite exactly what's going on. But suffering was less of a problem. Let's put it that way. Mm. Um, since I started to actually consider teachings that I thought were, were weird and different, they, they, they have merit and it's wonderful. And now I'm just sat here in this bath of, of Buddhist schools where they all kind of blur and merge together and they're just like us, really. We, we think of, of, of reality as this, I mean, the sense that me and Mouse were talking about in this sort of fabric of fluke, fluke let's call it that. Um, and, and the schools are just another part of that. And they're all pointing at the same thing. And if you look at I, I heard someone who wasn't a Buddhist teach me more about Buddhism than a lot of people. And mm -hmm. Another person's Muji, if you're interested. Um, <laughs> I, just, I haven't heard himself call himself a Buddhist, but he talks about the Buddha as a tangential thing. It's really like an aside to it. But um, guy's great. If you want to, if you want to mm -hmm. understand like the concept of self, he's a really good guy to listen to. He's he's He's, he's nailed it. <laughs> he really has. <laughs> um, so, rather than me talking mm. about my well, particular background, is there anything? Experience because, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, go on. Go on. We're both fighting the internet at this point. <laughs> go on. Carry on. Yeah. So it's what sometimes it? also hard because I hear you come in and out as well so i'm not quite sure when you're done speaking or if that's just the the nature of the internet being wonky but Understood. yeah but what you said about like actually putting effort into it like that really i guess resonates with me just because how I mentioned earlier, how I was looking for this straight path and just for someone to just tell me what to do, like just tell me what all the right things to do when really <laughs> there is, you know, not just one right way is, yeah, something that I've been floundering with. And it seems like you've been able to carve out your own way right now, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, thanks. Oh, I'm glad you. I'm glad you gained something from my rambling. <laughs> um, You're a lot more you coherent just... than I am, so. <laughs> well, do you want to know? So part of this is because I have to talk a lot anyway, and I naturally talk a lot. So I have a lot of practice at talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Some of this, you, you'll hear there are times where I am. Um, all over the place in my speech. And this will have. This isn't like within a meeting. This is minute to minute. Um, and you'll hear other times where every word is well thought out. And this is from practicing right speech, mm -hmm. which is an element of the Eightfold Path. So even if you're not interested in existential truths, Buddhism's got more to offer. So if you would like, and I, and I need to put a disclaimer here, I've had no formal teacher. I have not got any lineage, which some, especially in the background that you spoke of, uh, is quite important to them sometimes. Um, I can and share my personal understanding of things with you and steps that I have personally found helpful to understanding life and what it is to, to, to be here, I guess is the way to put it. Um, if you want to hear what I found helpful, I am more than happy to talk about it at length. And this goes with the extra disclaimer is, no matter what anyone tells you, whether it's me or the Buddha or someone else, always 
consider it, reflect upon it, and don't just take it. You probably know this, but I see for yourself, as they say. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the Pure Land people will be going no, <laughs> no, <laughs> because you're supposed to devote yourself and stop trying to do it yourself. But, um, but especially when I'm talking, because one thing that comes up for me is I will have some realization of some kind, and then I'll be like, oh, I'm done now. I've got this. I've got it. And then I'll be like, ah, oh, crap, no, I haven't. <laughs> At least there's a cycle. <laughs> and I keep gaining ground. I am going somewhere. And I'm, I'm speaking very loosely here because this is what's going somewhere is an interesting question to ask. But um, I, 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 I have ta taken steps. And like you said, you don't know what you don't know. And this is something I find really difficult about Dawson because I'm a programmer by trade. And in programming, I've got my niche. But I know what I don't know. If you, you could ask me to list the things I don't know, and I could just sit there and just tell you. <laughs> That's how much I know what I don't know in programming. Um, but it, <laughs> I couldn't do that. And so I, 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 I've had times where I've thought, well, I've, got, I've got to this final truth now. I just don't need it anymore. And I've been perfectly happy. And then something else has has happened and I've gone, oh, I stand corrected. And so if I'm saying that there is some ultimate truth, be skeptical of my mind at that moment, because maybe it's me ego talking. Maybe it's me thinking I've got the understanding that I haven't. And this is another reason to really listen to those teachers, because I've met arrogant Buddhists before, people who have memorized every sutra you can think of and can talk to you about the Dharma. When you actually look at how they practice their lives, they don't do it. Because you look at the way they're speaking mm -hmm. and you're hearing a sense of superiority. And one thing I'm going to claim to have understood thus far, and I think Mouse would agree from what you said earlier, is to claim superiority or to claim attainment in any sense is to miss yeah. to understand. Because if we're looking at in fact, before I go on about this, because I know Mouse has an understanding of this, and I need to make sure that this is skillful means here. So I need to make sure that I'm speaking the words that are useful to you. So do you know what I mean by when I say um, dependent arising or interbeing, I don't. I'm not. I'm not familiar with those terms. Okay. Um, by the way, um, note of the time. I am fine. If anyone wants to go, I take no offense if they don't want to hear this. <laughs> um. I'm good for now. So 